Good morning, or afternoon, or evening. Thanks for tuning in to what we call Morning Devotions at Discover Church. It is great to have you. You know, we have uh, kind of two studies going on within the midst of Morning Devotions. We've got Pastor Erickson working on the soils from the, um, the sower, the parable of the sower in Luke, Mark, and I believe Matthew also. And I'm looking at some of my favorite passages in Paul's letter to the churches. We move to the Second Corinthians passage, a Second Corinthians passage. And this passage will need a little bit of explaining. So I want to uh, read it and then I'll talk a little bit about the background and what it means for us. It's Second Corinthians starting at the, th- or in the third chapter, starting at the 16th verse. And this is what it says. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So what is all this talk about the veil? Well, that comes from the Old Testament, and actually Paul explains a little bit of that in the verses before that. But when Moses went in to talk with God in the tabernacle, in the Holy of Holies, he would come out and his face would be radiant, shining, so bright, in fact, that the rest of the Israelites couldn't look at him. So he put a veil on. And then when he went in to talk with the Lord, he would take the veil off. Well, here's the promise of Jesus and the giving of the Spirit, is that both when we talk to the Lord and when we come out, the veil is off. First, we see who Jesus is. We see who God is through Jesus. You know, Luther talked about Um, not trying to figure out who God was, the unknown God. God is so massive, so mighty. I mean, after all, we're talking about the creator of the universe. And the more we learn about the universe, the more we realize that whoever created it must have been beyond our comprehension. So it's futile, according to Luther, to try to guess what God is like that way. The way we have to discover who God is, is by discovering Jesus and coming to the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And when we do that, two things happen. First, we gain a new freedom in life. We realize who we are, who we were created to be, and we're able to act on that. It's not so much freedom from, it is, freedom from sin having the ultimate say in our life, but it's freedom for. Freedom for loving your neighbor. Freedom for becoming who God wants you to be. That's the first thing. But the second thing is maturity or transformation. Or maybe even a better word is metamorphosis, which is one of the Greek words used in this text. And it means to transform in astonishing ways. You probably know where we use that in English, that word metamorphosis. It's when a caterpillar makes a cocoon and comes out a butterfly. All the same DNA is still in that butterfly that was in the caterpillar. However, it has been changed. It has been transformed to its ultimate destiny to be a butterfly. For us, it's the same thing. That when we come to Jesus, the process of metamorphosis, of transformation, of becoming mature starts to happen. And how we can quicken that along, Paul does give us one thing to do, and that is to contemplate the Lord in the Spirit. To learn more and more about Jesus. 
That's why I'm always thankful for people who tune in to these morning devotions. And quite honestly, that's what these devotions, the purpose is for, is to help us learn who Jesus is, to deepen our understanding of Jesus. And not just for us, but to deepen our understanding so that we can reflect who Jesus is in our world. You know, Moses saw God so intensely and his face was so bright that the Israelites asked that he put a veil on it. We're called to look at Jesus in the same way, in the power of the Spirit, so that when we come out of our devotions, our prayer time, our worship, we're reflecting the Lord. And hopefully no one tells us to put a veil on our face. I doubt that. But hopefully they will look at us and say, hmm, something's different about that person. What is it? They seem to be changing. They seem to be transforming. They seem to be in a metamorphosis. And if we get asked that, we can say absolutely. The Lord God is transforming me into whom he created me to be. Let's pray. Lord God, we uh, ask that as we contemplate who you are, Jesus, that your spirit would open the eyes of our spirit, that we might understand you better, and that that understanding might transform who we are into whom you want us to be. Thank you for the freedom that you have given us in your cross and resurrection, freedom from sin, death, and the devil, that we can turn to you in that freedom and let your spirit transform us to whom we were created to be. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Be hope-filled. Stay strong, and God bless.